Good morning, baseball fans. Chris Durrell here with RotorPros.com to bring my daily fantasy MLB core plays for Monday, August 26th. We've got a seven-game slate tonight, a little bit smaller. Uh, one game going off in the afternoon, Atlanta at Colorado. I'm going to concentrate on the main slate here, and I'm going to look at a few pitchers that I'm going to be looking at for core, and then some stacks I'm going to be uh, targeting tonight for stacking for GPPs as well as maybe some one-offs and stuff like that for, for cash games as well that, that stand out. So with that, let's get started. We'll just jump right into pitching. Right at the top, we've got Sonny Gray tonight. Uh, he's a minus 152 road favorite. Big park boost for him uh, going into Miami from Great American Ballpark, his home ballpark there. Lowest total on the slate at 7.5. Um, he's by far the top price pitcher, as you can see here, 11-2 on DraftKings, 11-3 on FanDuel, very relative to the size of the slate and the other options available. Um, so keep that in mind. He's been absolutely elite lately. He's allowed... One earned run um, over his last four starts combined and has held opponents to two or fewer earned runs in nine of his last ten starts. From a fantasy perspective, he's hit 40-plus FanDuel points and 20-plus DraftKings points in nine of those ten or in nine of those ten starts. Four times value, six times. Um, that's FanDuel. And then two and a half times value, five times on DraftKings at these prices. Um, the reason I look at that is because we're looking for about two and a half X on on DraftKings for cash games and then we're looking at about 4x on FanDuel for cash games so he's been consistently hitting those numbers at these prices that he's at today so I, I'm definitely inclined to use him as my top pitcher tonight the K upside has been there back-to-back -back starts with 10 strikeouts in each of those starts pushing his K rate up to 29 percent for the season um, top K percent as you can see here um, on the entire slate and the other thing that I really like is that he's got a 52% ground ball rate to go along with that elite K rate, which really helps keep that ERA and that XFIP down there as well. In the last seven days, you know, looking at the matchup, um, it's definitely the top one on the board facing the Marlins. They've been bad all year, slightly worse against righties, the 284 Woba, 76 WRC+. Plus. And uh, 124 ISO. Looking at the last seven days, it appears the Marlins have, have been a little bit better, but it's been skewed by that 19 spot they put up last Friday. In the other five games over that last week, um, sample size, they've only scored 1.8 runs per game, nine total runs in those five games. So not a whole lot concerned um, about Miami. Don't look too much into when you go over here and look at these last seven days and see that they've been a little bit better as of late compared to the last 14, last 30 days even their season numbers, I'm not concerned at all. Definitely the top matchup on the board and my top pitcher overall tonight. <clears throat> if you're not spending up for Sonny Gray, Homer Bailey is going to be my next target. That's the game where we had that little bit of weather, so we're going to have to pay attention there. Um, but as of now, it looks like it's going to be a go. Shouldn't be any problems in that game whatsoever. It's going to be the likely chalk play just with the uh, lower price on him. Minus 151 road favorite. Not Only a 9 total, so there isn't a lot of high total games. So He's facing KC, who doesn't K much versus right-handed pitching, only 22%, but they've been absolutely terrible lately, scoring a league low 99 runs over the last month um, with an ugly 54 WRC plus over the last seven days, 40 WRC plus over the last 14 days. And I've also seen that K rate go up slightly as well, 26% last seven days, 24% last 14. He's been terrific since getting blown up by the Cubs in early August. He's allowed just one earned run in his last two starts. That's at San Francisco, so kind of a cakewalk matchup there a little bit. But then he did it um, at home versus the Yankees as well. Struck out 15 in those two two starts combined as well, 8 and 7. I believe it was 7 versus the Giants and 8 versus the Yankees. He's not too overpowering, so I'm not expecting that K upside. I'm expecting some regression, I guess is what I'm trying to say, with that K upside that we've seen here recently. But uh, from a points per dollar perspective, he's my number one pitcher um, on FanDuel. It's going to make a lot of sense, I think, to go towards him maybe in cash games, allow you to get some of the bats that I'm going to talk about here coming up. Third pitcher that stands out for me tonight is uh, rookie Dustin May of the Dodgers. Minus 140 favorite. 8,500 in FanDuel is a little higher than I would like to pay, but again, that's also relative to the slate size. I li love it at 6,200 on FanDuel. It'll allow you to get all the bats, stack anyone you want. Coming off his worst outing, but since being called up, but that was, he didn't start that game. Gonsolin started, he came in, he allowed for four earned runs, and that was last Sunday, so he's had a little bit of rest here. As a starter, um, he's gone three starts, he's gone five and two-thirds in all three, 
and that was against San Diego, St. Louis, and Miami. So he's had some good matchups. Um, he is facing San Diego again here tonight, so I definitely like that. There's maybe a little bit of risk that he's facing them the second time within a month, but San Diego, as you can see, if we scroll over, they are striking out almost 27% of the time versus right-handed pitching. And over the last seven days, they've got a 44 WRC plus 30% K rate. Last 14 days, 71 WRC plus 27% K rate. So they've been pretty terrible here lately. So Dustin May makes a lot of sense. Um, for cash games, you know, you can combine Bailey and Dustin May, I think, um, on DraftKings, and you're sitting at about 17,000, 17,600. Um, I think you could even go gray in May. That puts you very close to that threshold, uh, 20,000, 20, 20,500, which I, which I kind of look at maxing out. And so on the smaller slate, that's going to be a little bit tougher on DraftKings going that route just because um, you're going to want to get some of these bats in, and that's really going to limit that. It's only going to leave you about a $3,800, $3,900 average for the rest of your lineup. So I prefer more of the Bailey May on DraftKings and then on FanDuel for cash, I'm going to really try and get up to Sunny Gray. I'm hoping a few more value plays, maybe some min price guys show up in lineups. If not, I will just go down to Homer Bailey at uh, 3300 less, which will allow you to get the bats that we're going to discuss here. And so jumping into those stacks, I'm going to discuss two that stand out to me right away. Obviously, uh, Milwaukee at five implied runs leads the slate today. Uh, pretty good hitting park, as we can see. They've been pretty good lately here, looking at the last 14 days, 122 WRC plus 364 Woba. They're facing Adam Wainwright. So first of all, he's got a whip, 1.44. So he's given teams a ton of opportunities here. Um, he's struggled lately, giving up three plus earned runs in five of his last seven starts, and has given up home runs in four straight starts. What stands out the most to me are his splits against lefties, uh, 377 Woba, 519 slugging percentage. 1.71 home runs per nine and a 44% hard contact rate against lefties. Um, so that has me the top bats tonight for Milwaukee. I'm looking at Grindall, Yelich, and Moustakas. Also add in um, righties that are going to be probably at the top of the lineup. Kane leading off, and then he's he's fairly cheap on both sides. And then you got uh, Keston here there as well. I will be looking at him, whether he's at the top of the lineup. Even in the fifth, uh, I'll be looking at him maybe a little bit more as a uh, GPP option if he's down in the lineup a little bit. And then the value lefties that I'm looking at, uh, Eric Thames, either f most likely for GPP because he's going to be down in the order, and then Trent Grisham makes a lot of sense there as well. The other team I'm looking at uh, building around tonight will be the Diamondbacks. They're a little bit lower in implied runs, 4.6. A lot of that has to do with the park downgrade going from Arizona into San Francisco, but they get an excellent matchup versus Tyler Beatty. 1.63 whip on the season, 21% um, home run per fly ball rate. So he's given up a lot of walks. He's given up a lot of hits. He's given up a lot of home runs. That's really what we're looking for um, each and every night. So he kind of checks all those boxes. He's kind of been a dumpster fire most recently. He had a good stretch um, where you know we would be targeting him as maybe an SP2 on DraftKings with his K rate, but lately it's been it, three plus earned runs in six straight starts 25 total which equals an 8.23 ERA I believe that's right uh, he was right around like a 4.8 xFIP in that time as well so not as bad as the ERA suggests but still not good whatsoever and he's allowed at least one home run in all six of those starts with multiple home runs three times um, so looking at those six starts that's 11 total home runs 33 percent home run to fly ball rate and 51 percent hard contact rate so nothing really suggests that you know, he's going to be, you know, regressing, uh, positive regression and going back. I definitely like, uh, he's been bad versus both sides of the plate, but I'm really concentrating probably a little bit more on the left. He's been a little bit worse. So against righties, he's got a 350 Woba, 492 slugging percentage, 2.25 home runs per nine, 46% hard contact rate against. Against lefties, a little bit worse, 385 Woba, 531 slugging percentage, 1.9 home runs per nine, and 48.5% hard contact. So you can target both sides of the plate here, but for me, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, the lefties a little bit more, specifically Kettle Marte. Um, I'll definitely throw Dyson in there if he's back in the leadoff spot, and then Escobar uh, Marte. Escobar's a switch hitter as well, so both of those switch hitters, Marte and Escobar, at the top of the lineup with Dyson, kind of that's going to be my three Three-man stack from Arizona. I'm probably going to be using that in cash core with mixed in with some Milwaukee bats as well. 
And then next up for Arizona, I'm probably if Christian Walker's back in the four spot, he's been hitting cleanup um, with Peralta out of the lineup. So I'll be looking at him there. Um, Jake Lamb as a GPP play with power upside. Nick Ahmed maybe as a GPP play. He hits down in the lineup, so he's usually a little bit lower owned. So I definitely like attacking that. Maybe a mid to bottom of the lineup uh, stack there with Arizona. And then uh, Josh Rojas as well if you want to uh, maybe find a really cheap guy in that lineup as well. So that covers my core pitchers, my core stacks I'm going to be looking at tonight. I will have a lot more highlighted on the members-only cheat sheet, which you can get at uh, rotopros.com um, in our Slack chat. That's where I'll be sharing it. I'll be updating it throughout the day. I'll have umpire information in there. I'll have all my top stacks, all my top individual plays highlighted as well when you go through these uh, tabs here as well. Those will all be highlighted. So make sure to go to rotopros.com. If you're not a member, get your free trial. Come in, see what we're all about, and get your members-only cheat sheet. Again, thanks for checking out the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. A lot more videos coming down the line in the channel, especially with NFL season, NHL season right around the corner. So we'll talk to you soon. Let's go get some green screens tonight, everyone. Thanks a lot.